Hello, I'm Martin Lugger. Welcome to another Silicon Labs Dev Lab. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a matter over thread occupancy sensor. I'll be using the Arduino Nano Matter Board along with an SR602 PIR sensor. You could use similar digital sensors in place of this, and alternatively, there's a version of the code that uses the onboard button to toggle between the occupied and the unoccupied states. By the end of the video, you will have an occupancy sensor commissioned into a major matter ecosystem. I'll be using Amazon's, and it will report its occupancy state back to the app. I'll also show you how to set up a routine to automatically turn a matter color light, also running on the Arduino Nano Matter board, on and off. The routine is easily adapted to control groups of light and their color and brightness could also be controlled. Let's take a look at the hardware and software you will need to follow along. Links to all these resources are available in the video description. You'll need an Arduino Nano Matter board to use as the occupancy sensor. Or you could use one of the other Arduino IDE compatible Matter boards from Silicon Labs or SparkFun. Though you may need to adjust the hash defines for the input pin from the sensor or button and also the output pin for the status LED. If you want to use a PIR, you'll also need an SR602 or similar device. These are simple devices with just power connectors and a digital output which is high when occupied and low when unoccupied. The PIR can simply be connected on a breadboard. During the video, I'll be using a custom PCB that replicates this wiring. If you want to make your own, you can find a fritzing file and Gerber's in the GitHub repository. You will also need a smart hub that includes support for matter over thread. I'll be using Amazon's Echo Show 8. Similar devices are available from Google and Apple. If you prefer an open source solution, the Home Assistant platform supports matter over thread in a beta form, running either on their Home Assistant Yellow or a Raspberry Pi with their Sky Connect USB dongle. If you are ordering a device, check that it supports both matter and thread protocols. If you want to control a light, you'll need a second board running one of the light examples. I'll be using the Nano Matter light bulb colour example running on an Arduino Nano Matter board. See the quick start Arduino Nano Matter video for a walkthrough on setting up the Arduino IDE, creating, compiling and commissioning a light device. The Arduino IDE can be freely downloaded from Arduino's website. You could also use any other lights in your ecosystem, including non-matter devices. The code for this dev lab can be found in the Silicon Labs Training Examples repository on GitHub. From the code drop-down, you can clone the repository using your favorite Git client, or simply download a zip with the files. The occupancy sensor source code can be found in the dev lab Arduino Matter Occupancy Sensor folder. Let's dive straight in. I have the Dev Lab Arduino Matter Occupancy Sensor folder open from the files downloaded from GitHub. From here, you will need to open the appropriate folder for the setup you are using. If you don't have a PIR sensor connected, go into the BTN Matter Occupancy Sensor subfolder and open the .ino file from there. If you are using a PIR sensor, Open the .ino file from the PIR Matter Occupancy Sensor folder. This is the version I'll be demonstrating today, but we will take a look at both versions of the code. I have the board I will be using as the occupancy sensor connected to my PC. In the Arduino IDE, the Silicon Labs Arduino core is already installed and the board type and port have been configured. From the tools menu, I'll check that protocol stack is set to matter and the programmer is set to open OCD as I'm using an Arduino Nano Matter board. Use simplicity commander here if you are working with Silicon Labs or SparkFun boards. 
Before I continue, I'm going to click Burn Bootloader to ensure I'm working with a clean board with no retained MATA credentials in the non-volatile memory. Once complete, I can click the Upload button to compile the application and transfer it to the connected board. While the application is compiling, we'll take a look at the code. Some of the startup code is the same as that used in the bulb examples. If you need a full walkthrough, see the Quick Start Arduino Nano Matter video, but I'll cover it briefly here. The common matter.h file is included once again for common APIs, but this time the matter occupancy.h file is used to bring in the matter occupancy object that implements our required device type. Defines are used to set the input and output pins used by the application for the sensor or button and LED. In the PIR version, LED1 is used, which is the green LED, to indicate the occupancy state, and the input from the sensor is taken from the D6 pin. In the button version, LED built-in is used, which is the red LED, to indicate the occupancy state, and for the occupancy input, the built-in button is used. A define is also set to time the input reading every 20 milliseconds. The update output function prototype is used to update the occupancy LED when the occupancy state changes. Then we move on to the global variables, starting with an instance of the matter occupancy sensor object. Then two variables are used to time the input polling. The final variable is a bit mask used to debounce the input pin from the PIR or button. The setup function, called once at startup, is very similar to the one in the colour bulb example. The matter and matter occupancy sensor objects are started. The only difference between the PIR and button versions are in the debug message that is output. Commissioning, joining and online checks are identical to the colour bulb. Once the sensor is online, there is added code to configure the input and output pins and make sure that the output pin is set to the correct value using the update output function. The timer variables are also initialized here. In the loop function, called repeatedly while the application is running, the timer values are checked to see if the polling period has expired. When this happens, the old debounce value is retained to check for changes later. The debounce value is shifted one bit left, and if the input is high, the least significant bit is set to one. Whenever the old and new debounce values are different, the values are checked to update the occupancy state. For the PIR sensor version, when none of the bits are set, the occupancy state is set to unoccupied. Similarly, when all the bits are set, the state is set to occupied. In both cases, the occupied state is set by writing directly to the matter occupancy sensor object, and the LED is updated with a call to the update output function. The button version reacts to a change in the input in a slightly different way. This time, when none of the bits are set, the button has been pressed. The occupied state is toggled, with the current state being retrieved using the getOccupancy function. The update output function is called again to update the LED. The update output function is straightforward, turning the LED on or off depending on the occupancy state. The occupancy sensor code should now be built and uploaded, so let's commission it and see how it operates. Extracting commissioning codes for the occupancy sensor is the same as the light bulb. Start by opening the serial monitor and make sure the board rate is set to 115 200. Then reset the board. Copy the QR code URL from the serial monitor window and paste it into a browser to display the QR code. Commissioning the occupancy sensor is exactly the same as it was for the light, so let's step through it. I'm in the Amazon app and I'm already on the Devices tab, so I'm going to click the Add Device button and select Add Device from the pop-up menu. 
Once again, I'll scroll to the bottom and select Other, and then I'm going to select the Matter logo. Just like before, I'll click Yes to say my device has a Matter logo, and Yes to say it's powered on, and I'm now ready to scan the QR code that I have on screen. At this stage, I get a warning that the device isn't Matter compatible. We think this is because the Arduino example applications all use a MATA test certificate, and you may see similar warnings in other ecosystems. If you productize your device, you will need to obtain a unique certificate for each physical device from the Connectivity Standards Alliance, and this warning will no longer appear. When working with Arduino MATA example applications, you can just click Yes to continue. and our occupancy sensor is now detected and it's all ready to be set up. So let's do that in the app, starting by clicking Next. I'll begin with the hub type device, which is included as a side effect of creating the occupancy sensor endpoint at runtime and doesn't provide any device functionality. I'll rename it to Occupancy Hub. And I'll click the Update button to update the name. And then we'll finish up by setting the name for the occupancy sensor itself. And I'll skip adding it to a room. So now we're ready to go. Let's see the occupancy sensor working in the app. I have a color light running at the top of the screen and the occupancy sensor is at the bottom. I'll start by opening the Occupancy Sensors view. At the moment it's detecting motion, as indicated by the green LED being lit. And if I cover up the PIR sensor itself with a bottle cap, we'll see the light go off shortly. And then the app display will update its state a few seconds later. Being able to monitor the state is all very well but we might want to take an action when the state changes, such as turning our colour light on or off. Let's set that up in the app, starting by clicking the Create a Routine from the Occupancy Sensors window. Here I'm going to click the Add button in the upper right, and I'm going to begin by selecting an event. In here I need to navigate through to the Occupancy Sensor, and I'm going to set up a trigger when a motion is detected. Next, I need to set up the action. So I'll click the plus button. I need to go into my smart home and select lights. And then I'm going to select color light. And here I'm going to change the power by turning it on and I'll click next. Before I finish, I'm going to rename this routine because it's a bit long. So I'm just going to name it occupied. And now I can save my routine. I also want to set up a similar routine when the occupancy sensor reports it's unoccupied to turn off the colour light. Let's return to the app and I'll add a new routine for the unoccupied routine. So I'll begin by adding an event and I'll work through the screens to find my occupancy sensor. When working with the not detected event you can put a delay in so it makes sure the lights don't get turned off until a period of time after motion ceases. For the purposes of this workshop, I'm going to set this to zero, which is probably too short for real use, and click next to continue. Next, I need to add the action. So I'll find my color light once again, and click next. Once again, I'm going to go into the power, but this time I'm going to turn the light off. And just like before, the routine has a very long name, so I'm going to change it to unoccupied. Click next and I can now save the routine. Note that the routines are very flexible. Rather than turning individual lights on or off in the way that I've set it up just now, you can also enable it to turn whole rooms of lights on or off. And if you're working with individual lights, you could also change their colors or their brightness if you wanted to.
The other setting that can be applied to routines is that they only operate at certain times. So in the case of our occupancy sensor, we might set the occupied routine to only turn the light on during the hours of darkness. Let's return to our boards and see that in action. At the top I'm running the colour light that we created earlier. I'll start by introducing some motion and we can see that the light has been turned on and the app is updated when motion is detected. If I cover up the sensor once again, the sensor board will move to the unoccupied state and that will be followed a few seconds later by the light being turned off and the app updated to show no motion. Now we've seen the sensor in action, let's look at the theory behind it. The most efficient method is for the hub to subscribe to the occupied attribute. The occupancy sensor will then send attribute reports whenever the value is changed. A maximum report interval can also be set to receive reports even when the attribute is unchanged. When the hub receives the attribute report, the routines kick in to send an on or off command to the light bulb. In this setup, there's no direct communication between the sensor and the light. The hub is reacting to reports from the sensor and generating commands to send to the light. While there are certain device types, like switches, that can generate direct commands from one device to another by creating bindings, they are currently little supported by the major ecosystems. The advantage of the hub controlling this is that non-matter devices can be controlled by matter devices and vice versa. We've now reached the end of this dev lab with our matter occupancy sensor created in the Arduino IDE controlling our light. The routine that was created during the video can easily be adapted to control groups of lights and only operate between certain times. It can also be changed to change the colour or brightness of lights instead of simply turning them on and off. As a reminder, you can find links to the hardware, software and further information in the video description. Thanks for watching.